Hey there, Randy Walker here, and want to talk a little bit about Rafael Nadal. And uh, kind of a funny story that uh, I like to tell about the 2004 Davis Cup Final featuring the United States against Spain in Sevilla, Spain, where I had the privilege of being the press officer uh, for the U.S. team, for the U.S. Tennis Association. Um, but the 2004 year, the 2004 Davis Cup Final, this was Rafael Nadal, before he was Rafael Nadal, he was only 18 years old and uh, had yet to even play the French Open. Um, and he was on the four-man team that was selected by Spanish captain Jordi Rese uh, to play against the United States, captained by Patrick McEnroe, uh, featuring uh, world number two Andy Roddick, uh, Olympic silver medalist that year, Marty Fish, and the greatest doubles team of all time, or soon to be the greatest doubles team of all time, Bob Mike Bryan. Um, and the, the Davis Cup final was played in Sevilla, Spain. It was a 60,000 seat arena um, that uh, was mainly a soccer arena. It was uh, built to potentially uh, have Sevilla host the Olympic Games, which they obviously didn't get. Um, and uh, this was in uh, uh, the late in the year 2004. It was a little chilly, but they put a clay court down in the corner of the stadium. The seating capacity was 27,200. It was the largest crowd at the time to ever watch a sanctioned tennis match, you know, not including exhibitions like, you know, Battle of the uh, Sexes, Bobby Riggs versus Billie Jean King, you know, et cetera. So uh, clay court, the corner of the stadium, 27,200 fans, Sevilla, State, Sevilla Spain. And um, so as uh, the week was going on, one of the things that I um, like to do uh, with uh, during my uh, with my press officer duties and so forth was you know mingle with the press and get to know the Spanish press and you know figuring out you know times when you know the the, the U.S. team would be uh, available for press and ushering them to pre uh, event press conferences uh, etc. And I certainly always like to uh, you know engage not just in the American press but you know certainly the Spanish press too. So talking a lot with the Spanish press. Um, you know, what was their team going to be um, like? Their team was uh, Carlos Moya, who was uh, number five in the world, former French Open champion. Uh, Juan Carlos Ferrero, who uh, the previous year won the French Open and was number one in the world. And then the last two players on the team were Tommy Robredo, who was, uh, you know, just a great, steady uh, clay court, uh, you know, bull of a player. And the last player was Rafael Nadal, 18-year-old Rafael Nadal, who just, you know, was just coming into his own. You know, he was playing in his first Davis Cup final, the biggest match of his, uh, you know, career, the biggest, uh, 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 um, you know, stage that he was playing on in his, his young career at the time. Um, so in speaking with the Spanish press, I was trying to get a little intelligence because, you know, Captain Arese of Spain was, you know, a little tight-lipped about who was going to be playing singles. Obviously, Moya was certainly going to be playing the singles, but wasn't so sure that Ferreira was going to play because he had had a bad year. He had some injuries. He had mono, you know, didn't really have a great year. Robredo was, you know, pretty rock solid. But were they going to put this 18-year-old untested kid, Rafael Nadal, in the lineup? That was kind of the question. And... Uh, you know, I was talking to the Spanish press and they were telling me, you know, yeah, I think it's going to be the kid, you know, the Nadal, I think he's going to be the guy that's going to play. He's very good, you know, you, you know, he, he's a very good player, you know, but I was just, you know, completely excited because that was going to be our chance to beat Spain. You know, Patrick and McEnroe and Andy Roddick and the whole team was saying, Beating Spain in Spain on clay, that's the ultimate challenge. I mean, that's about as hard of an assignment as you can have um, in tennis. Um, so, uh, you know, it was very uh, uh, interesting because if you have Andy Roddick, who's been playing in you know, Grand Slam Finals, number one in the world, um, you know, playing against a guy that's untested and has never played in a big stage match like the Davis Cup Final. Plus, Andy had just throttled Roddick in straight sets. I mean, Andy had throttled Nadal, excuse me, in the uh, uh, US Open 
a couple of months earlier. Uh, straight set it and beat him like a drum. I remember I was watching that match with Rulon Gardner, the famous gold medal winning Greco-Roman wrestler in a suite. Um, and we had arranged for uh, Rulon to come on and cheer on Andy since they became pals at the 2004 um, Olympics. Um, but Andy had just throttled Nagal, um, you know, so I thought that was a good, a good uh, matchup for us that Andy could win that match again. You know, Carlos Moya playing against Marty Fish, you know, that's a tough, uh, tough ass for Marty. Brian certainly could win the doubles. And, um, you know, that would put us up 2-1 after the, after entering the third day. And then, uh, you know, hey, Andy against Moya, maybe he could pull an upset there. And certainly Marty playing against this young kid, Nadal, you know, he could win that too. So we had a chance, I thought, um, that we could, uh, you know, pull off this upset. The United States could pull off this upset. And, um, you know, if this young kid, Nadal, would, uh, would, would play and would, uh, you know, they say about Davis Cup, anything can happen in the Davis Cup and the pressure of Davis Cup, um, you know, is something that's unmatched in tennis. So I, I kind of had my hopes that maybe he would... Uh, you know, wilter in this uh, pressure cooker. Um, but anyway, the draw came out. Uh, Marty Fish had to play Carlos Moya first, and uh, Marty lost in straight sets. You know, not a, a terrible surprise there, unfortunately for Marty. Um, and then, uh, uh, and then Andy played against Rafael in the second match. Andy won the first set, uh, seven six eight six breaker. Uh, lost the second set, uh, and then in the third set. It also went to a tiebreaker, um, and uh, Andy uh, had a set point to go up two sets to one, missed a forehand passing shot just on the tip of the tape that would have given him a two sets to one lead, but then he uh, lost the next two points, lost that crucial third set tiebreaker, and lost 6-2 in the fourth, so, you know, oh well, Nadal with his first big win of his career. Um, then the Bryans uh, ended up playing Robredo, and um, uh, Juan Carlos Ferreira beat them like a drum. And then Andy uh, was playing against Carlos Moya in the, in the fourth rubber, had to win it to stay alive. Moya was too tough, won in straight sets. Spain wins the Davis Cup, three to one. Marty Fish won the dead rubber against Robredo to make the final score three two. But uh, fascinating uh, weekend in, in Seville, Spain. One of the highlights of my career, the press officer. Um, I still have the poster uh, from that Davis Cup tie, uh, España versus USA. It was uh, December 3, 4, 5. Estadio Olimpico de Sevilla. Um, and uh, surprisingly not, maybe, to some of you, that I still have the U.S. Davis Cup team uh, 2004 Davis Cup uh, sweat top. Um, I'm kind of uh, known as a hoarder a bit for my... Uh, um, you know, keep a lot of my, my old merchandise. Um, so I've also written about this entire year in Davis Cup, which was really exciting. It started with a win against Austria at Mohegan Sun in Connecticut, Uncasville, Connecticut. Um, and then it was uh, against uh, Sweden in Delray Beach, Florida. That was the quarterfinal win where I helped usher in a um, anthem singer named Jake Owen who's a friend of Marty Fish, to sing the national anthem, his first ever public singing appearance, which obviously he went on to superstardom after that, thanks to me. <laughs> um, amazing talent, Jake Owen from Vero Beach, Florida. And, um, and then in the semifinals, the USA beat Belarus in Charleston, South Carolina, um, and then leading into the final, which uh, against Spain. So uh, that is a Davis Cup ebook that I published on the Amazon platform. It's called U.S. Davis Cup Team Stories. Um, and I have several other um, Davis Cup uh, year recaps uh, from my years that I played, uh, that I uh, worked as a Davis Cup press officer. Um, so check those out. Those are really interesting reading and really brings you back to the golden days, um, you know, of Davis Cup with this, uh, the old format and so forth. So anyway, just a little reminiscence there of Rafael Nadal. Um, and Davis Cup, love Davis Cup, love the old Davis Cup, and um, you know certainly Rafael Nadal, Rafael Nadal went on to be have an amazing career with all of his French Open wins and Grand Slam victories. So uh, anyway, Randy Walker signing off with this great um, remembrance of Davis Cup and Rafael Nadal, and check out those books on Amazon. U.S. Davis Cup team stories.
Randy Walker, over and out.